Hey guys, in this video I'd like to talk about this equation up here. So this equation basically allows you to determine whether or not a reaction will proceed spontaneously. And it does that using this term here, delta G. And this is Gibbs free energy. And what you need to know is that if Gibbs free energy is negative, the reaction is spontaneous. However, if Gibbs free energy is positive, then the reaction is not spontaneous. And you can see that Gibbs free energy is determined by all of this, right? So delta H is the enthalpy change. This is the amount of heat that is either absorbed or released by the reaction, and it allows us to say whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. T, this is the temperature in Kelvin. And importantly, I put in parentheses here zero Kelvin because this is the lowest that Kelvin can go. And that's important because you need to know that Kelvin can never be negative. You can't have a negative Kelvin. It's it, the lowest it goes is zero. That's where it bottoms out. And the entropy change, delta S, is essentially the increase or decrease in randomness of the chemical reaction. So I'd also like to mention that these are two good equations to know. So what this one says is that the delta G of an overall reaction is equal to the delta G's of all the products added together. That's what this fancy E stands for here, sum. And N stands for the number of moles. So for example, if there are two moles of something in the products, you would multiply its delta G by two minus the delta G's of all the reactants added together. And this equation says the same exact thing for entropy, delta S. So let's use these equations in our problem. Okay, I've got an example problem written up on the board here, and I already have all the work written out, so I wanna walk you through this very carefully. So the problem asks, is this reaction right here, is this spontaneous at 25 degrees Celsius? So it's a good idea to get in the habit of changing Celsius to Kelvin whenever you're doing thermodynamics problems. So 25 degrees Celsius is approximately 298 degrees Kelvin, so I went ahead and did that first. And so we know in order to determine if this reaction is spontaneous, there are a couple different ways to do that based on the information that we're given. But in this case, we were given the standard enthalpies and entropies of all of our reactants and products. So we know from this data, we can find the overall delta H and the overall delta S using those equations that I had just mentioned in the previous clip. So we know that if we add up all of the delta H values for our products and subtract all of the delta H values added together for our reactants, we can get the overall delta H for the reaction. And we can do the same exact thing for entropy. So you can see here, my delta H for my products all added together is gonna to be zero plus negative 924.54. So this was the delta H sum of my products. And then here I've got the delta H sum of my reactants. It was, I'm gonna do minus two times negative 285.83, and then the zero does not contribute anything. So the overall delta H for this reaction is negative 352.88 kilojoules per mole. That, those are the units that you'll generally be given for enthalpy. So we do the same exact thing for entropy. We just have different values. So we start off adding together all of the entropies of our products. So for H2, that's gonna be 130.7, and for uh, magnesium hydroxide is going to be 63.18. So this is the summation of our product's entropies. And then we're going to subtract the reactant entropy sum, right? So for our reactants, we're going to have 32.67 plus 2 times 69.95 since we have 2 moles of water. So overall, this is going to give us an entropy for this overall reaction of 21.31 joules per moles times Kelvin. And those are usually the units you'll be given for entropy. And notice here we had kilojoules per mole for our enthalpy. And now we have joules per mole times Kelvin of our entropy. We want those units to match. So I went ahead and divided this uh, number by 1,000 to get kilojoules per mole times Kelvin. So now they match for our equation here that we just learned that we're gonna be able to utilize now. See, to tell whether this reaction is spontaneous, hopefully it's been obvious why we've been doing all this work, we wanna see if delta G is positive or negative because that allows us to tell whether the reaction is spontaneous. So now that we have our delta H, 
our t and our delta s, we can simply plug in all the values. And if you have a calculator, you'll see that this comes out to negative 359.23 kilojoules per mole. So now, not only do we know that, yes, this reaction is in fact spontaneous at 25 degrees Celsius, but we actually know the precise energy change per mole. We know that for every mole unit of uh, reactants that are converted into products, this reaction gives off 359.23 kilojoules per mole. So I hope this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions or you're interested in tutoring, please contact me at facebook.com slash tutoring, and I'll see you guys in the next video.